Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. Look at this. We're going to be working on this really sweet and kind of cheeky little robin. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are, I hope that this is a fantastic Friday. Here in the United States, it's that super shopping day of the year, and um, I'm still in my PJs. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited and happy that you are here. We are going to be doing this really cute little robin. It is uh, super, super simple because remember, just like my dr how to draw birds, birds come from eggs. And so this is a true little egg-shaped bird. Welcome guys, so happy that you're here. I hope that you will share this video with your friends. Make sure that they know it's out there if you are, um, and if you're interested in, I'm, I have two ways that I could go with this little bird. I could do this little bird exactly like I did this one. And it's just like my hashtag shorts video that I did here on uh, YouTube, that uh, that's this bird right here. <laughs> and under a minute, I show sketching it in with a pen and painting it with watercolor. But this is going to be a more relaxing time. I'm hoping that we can get it done in about half an hour. I know we could get it done in half an hour if I didn't talk too much. But the other way that we can do it, and it was a request from Taz. No, Ta Taz. Taz? one of my community members, and uh, she asked, she, he, I don't know, they asked uh, for a Robin with a little Santa hat on. So I have both ways. I've got the Robin on a wood rail, or I have the Robin with um, maybe a little holly branch and a Santa hat. So what do you guys want to see? You guys you, my fortunate ones who showed up here to the live stream at the beginning, get to choose with the Santa hat or the natural bird. I am really excited to find out which one you want to do. I will be inking this in and that whichever one I do, because I have already sketched the natural Robin also. So I will be painting all of the birds. What I will do is whatever one we decide, I will do at the beginning. I'll sign off, but then um, I'll continue painting, or I might just let the video continue running and record it, but then trim the video off. Up to you. With the hat. Ooh, okay. With the hat, please. I like that. Uh, that's why I drew it. <laughs> So let's get started here. I'm going to start inking that little guy in so you'll be able to see. The uh, paper that I used for this one was the uh, sample page of the Bamboo Mixed Media by Hanamu. I'm not sure I know how to say that right. <laughs> but uh, that's how I, I'm practicing on those pieces of paper. See, this is just sample paper. And... I'm going to be getting a link so that you guys will be able to get uh, a little like couple page samples of the Hannah Mule paper really soon. I just don't have it yet. You choose the Robin on a Holly branch. Awesome. Okay. That's what we're going to start doing. I'm going to zoom in and as I draw him in, I will talk because it is already sketched on here. I want to say that right up front. This little bird is already sketched on here. When I take my pen, I am, sorry, making a lot of noise. I am going to just grab a, a fresh one so that you guys don't have to hear me get my pen restarted. If you, if your pen dries in the tip, just rub it on another piece of paper and it should start. Okay, so it has started again. 
I'm just going to set it over to the side. That one's almost out. Here's a new pen. New pen. We're going to start by... <laughs> on any kind of a branch. Yeah, we're going to start here. This is a super simple bird to draw. The robin, and I've got a picture in picture up here in the corner with the sample that, um, or reference, that little bird is the reference for this. It helps me with the colors and it helps me with uh, size and shape. Robins are little fluffy birds. So when you're putting your pen lines on, let your pen line be a little broken. Now that is a broken line, not a hesitant line. I'm not, let's see here. Let's grab another piece of just a piece of paper. When I am drawing, you can draw a confident line. You can draw broken line. That is a confident line. Okay. Or there's those like really light and sketchy lines. You can do those too. Many times if I'm sketching with my pen, see how I've got that super hard line down to a really soft line. The ink is still the same color of black. I did not change colors. All I did was change the intensity of the ink by how hard I was pressing with the pen tip. All right. I hope that that is helpful to you. That is actually how I sketched in this little guy because I did him straight with the pen and no pencil. Hello, hello from Germany and hello, Ontario, Canada. Wow. Yeah, it must be going on um, evening time in Germany. Hello, Winnipeg. All right. So... Now what I'm doing, I'm looking at that, that reference right there, and you can see a bit of the wing edge going along that, right along the body. And his little wings come down past the body. And as it comes past, the line gets a little stronger. And then it comes back up into the body. What you're seeing along the back right here, you're seeing some of his back but you're also seeing the edge of the wing and then coming off the back of his body is the tail. And now his tail is going off the edge of the paper because I drew him quite large and there's probably going to be some shadow up inside there. Let's get his eyeball on. That's just a little circle or kind of um, a little squish circle, but I didn't do that. I gave him a, a really wide open eye. His beak is basically a triangle, a skinny triangle, right? And to put his hat on, now I will draw with a pencil the top of his head so you can see kind of the top of his little head would be right here. So if you wanted to just draw the little bird, you could stop right there and just go down and give him his legs. But if you want the hat, what we're going to do is come down his back a little bit here. And I'll do that with the pen. Come down his back a little bit and it's going to be over and sort of pushed up over his eye a little. We're making sort of a, a sausage shape, just like that. You could break that line. It doesn't have to be a solid line. I just, I did it as a solid line just so you could see it. Now you want the backside of his hat to come out of the brim area here. So come up and then out, right? Because it would have to be inside that. And then the little, the little ball. I'm going to drop it back down. He's on a branch. So I'm going to bring that branch all the way to the edge and right up to where I want his feet to be. Just so 
I know. His legs come at an angle. He's got a toe that goes to the back and some toes that go to the front and they're rolled around. And his little leg is pretty much going to be in silhouette, so it's going to be dark. I'm not too worried about the specifics of how his little feet are working here. Just make sure that you send his legs going back into his body. And the reason why you want to do that is because that helps his body to balance. If you look at this, you see how his body weight would be right here. And that way his head can tip forward just a little bit and give him some balance. To make this a really cute little Robin, it does have this sweet little orange face and tummy. And you can bring your orange around the eye or under the eye, either way. I'm gonna try and keep it under the eye this time. You know, that sort of works. Comes down, the orange sort of tips over his little shoulder and it comes down his chest. Now, I just brought that down way far. I can bring it up. That'll just be a little bit of texture down in here his eye, I'm going to go ahead and color it almost all the way in. I started from the back and I'm working my way to the front so that way I can leave a little tiny sliver of white right there. Remember, this is an easy to draw, easy, easy to draw bird. Oh, and the paper that I ended up drawing on this one was the Arteza 140 pound because I'd set this one up with the Hannimal um, 30 GSM or 140 pound. But because we didn't choose that one right now, that's not the paper I'm using. Just so that you know, I'm using the Hannimal paper on the regular one and I'm using the Arteza paper for the Santa hat. For the other side here, I don't know that I really want that many berries. I think I'm going to do three or four berries and I'm just making some rough little circles. Bring that stem in and then I'm going to tuck some holly. And it's just that easy to draw. It's swoop and swoop a line in the middle, and then a couple more little swoops. And we'll, we'll stick another one right up here, coming up towards him. So a line in the middle if you want, and then swoop. Give it a few swoops. Try and stay sort of symmetrical. These are not going to be, you know, super realistic. They are just fun. You could do a card with just holly, and I'll show you how. So is everybody caught up? Are you uh, excited? Are you having fun? I am so glad that you guys are joining me from all over the world. This is super fast, super fun, and super easy. It's super. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and erase all my pencil lines now. You can leave your pencil lines if you want. I'm just going to take them off. Today I'm just using the fan palette because it's got all these colors already here. This is a uh, inexpensive palette of paints. If you want to get started painting, having something like this, uh, it's like I found some that were 12 to $14 for the 42 colors they're, they're sold by several different people on Amazon, but as long as you can kind of read where it says superior watercolor and 42, it's the same palette. And I am going to skip over here to my oranges and browns. When I did this one, and I will be doing it again, if you look at that sample or the ref reference, he does have this gray blue in him. 
Yay! All right, Linda. Welcome, welcome. So glad to see you. If you guys don't know Linda, she does amazing videos over on Tangi for that incorporate family and fun and crafts and cooking. And uh, Linda, go ahead and just drop your um, Tangi name in a co in a um, comment. That would be lovely. She's um, Bake Play Bee Mom, I think. I, I always get that messed up because it's so many words, but she's awesome. And she does all of my videos and shares them with me over on Tangi also. You can share it on Tangi too. If you want the link for Tangi, I think, let's see here. No, I don't have that one. I don't have it. Here is the link to my, my page on Tangi. One minute videos, one to two minute videos. So much fun. There we go. All right. So, and we're doing this little guy with his hat. I'm using a water brush. This is just a plastic tube filled with water. And to start off with, I'm going to go sort of light with my colors and just start getting them worked in. I know that I do want a blue. I want browns and I want the oranges and yellows and reds. Be, mo be a mom, be you. Okay, see, that's, <laughs> that's what I was looking for. There's so many words. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to start, and just because I like to start it quick, I am going ahead and putting some of that paint right here on my palette, or on my plastic board. This is a piece of that coral plast plastic board that I paint that I taped down to. And I'm going to lightly put some color right in because I want to get that Robin look going really quick. And look at that. We don't have to follow all of our pen lines. Hello, Lorianne. Oh, it's not available in the EU yet. I am so sorry. If you want to see this video, um, let's see here. Did I pin it at the top? I didn't pin it. Just a moment. If you want to see how I did my short mess, my short video, let's see if that goes. Is that going to pin it now? Come on, pin. Pin that message. If you don't pin, I will do it do it this way. Ha ha. I can do it many ways, my friends. Paste. And go. There we go. So you can see what the video, the speed video that I did on Tangi looks like. I did it also as a short here on YouTube. So hashtag shorts. Yeah, I'm trying to do those. Now, I want to get sort of a gray blue in here, and I've got this orange on my brush. I'm going to go in and pick up, there's this other blue, and it's kind of tucked in the palette here. I'll just shift those. I do have a little sample board that I made. That's the brown, that's the blue. There it is. Kind of the Prussian blue color here. And I'm going to take a little bit of that orange and start mixing orange into that blue. It desaturates it, makes it a little bit more blue. Oh, Linda, you're in the EU also. Yeah, I don't know where. Thank you. So I'm putting sort of this this gray brown gray brown darker color around under the wing coming up the belly underneath because we are going to make it more blue as we work it up but I just want to get some undertone color going on here the same with up in the wing painterly and work with soft uh, soft layers it's really interesting. This paper does take layers well. 
let's move that back so we can get all the way back here to his tail. See how I just sort of plotched the paint in? Not worried about making it perfect. I'm taking more of the blue-gray, more of the blue. See, and I'm just using that, that surface, like I said, and now I want to get some more of that blue-gray right in here. But by wetting the paper with that sort of gray color to start off with, it really helped. When you push the link, it says not available. You might have to download the app def to get to it. There's on your phone, um, phone store. If it's available in your country, it'll be on uh, the Apple store or on your on Google Play store or whatever your phone app is. I'm just dropping some of this color around just to start getting some in and I am going I didn't wash my brush did I I'm just gonna go and grab some of this brown get a lot of water in it and I want to put more brown tones here in his belly down low because I'm working in thin layers the paint is drying quickly you can move this paint around and it does paint into layers really nice. Look at that. So we're getting his, his coloring in. I think I got a little bit dark right here. Look at that. I can go in and get it wet and dab with a paper towel. Look at that. We were able to lighten that up a little bit and now bring in a little bit of color again. I want to lighten up down here on his belly a little bit. And neat thing is, is that it helps to build texture. It helps to build texture. I'm going to grab some of that brown now and get it up here along the back of his back of his body and under the edge of his hat. By having the edges sort of fall away as um, a little bit darker. They're not going to be darker than the background though. I think this one's going to get, or they might be darker than the background. I don't know. When you're going in on the wing, if you start taking some of your colors and, whoops, how did I get white on my tip of my brush? There it is. Picked up a piece of paper. If you go in and start putting a few of the lines for the wing, as streaks, it will start feeling more feathery. Oh, excellent. You want, you saw the short video, but you wanted more. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to do more with you also. And you know, today is a good day to grab your paints and just have some fun. I am going to take some of that orange that has a touch of the blue in it and start working a little bit of some shadow down here on the chest and sort of in that margin area where it's meeting up. And now this is not a really dark version of the color, but it's another layer of it. So you're building layers of pigment and that helps to build the the idea that he's got depth and shape to him. I am actually going to grab a brighter orange and yep, brighter orange. Start warming that up just a little bit more. See, and if I didn't like the color, I could always go back in and just soften it up. Few of those feathers outside of that area. Thank you so much. It's fun to do things like this. I'm going to grab some of that darker brown. Orange is considered a brown. Did you know that? Especially when you start adding just a touch of blue to it, 
it makes it a much more natural color. And I'm gonna just drop some of that darker color up here and coming off the back of his eye. And even right up here under the hat. We're just building color. We're, we're building layers upon layers and put a color down. If you don't like it while it's wet, dab it off. But I like that. The top of a wing has, you know, lots of those little tiny feathers. So I'm building that area right here. Build your layers. Don't worry about it being perfect though. I'm going to just take some of that blue gray and drop it down here in the legs because if you look at his legs, his legs are pretty much in silhouette and they're dark, but I don't want it to be totally dark. I want there to be a highlight. So I'm putting some of that blue gray down first. Let's zoom in, Let's zoom in. Give you a little bit closer view. Yeah, it's, it's always fun to learn new things. And I love learning new things. Oh, isn't he turning out so sweet? I think I want to go ahead and take some of this brown, just straight brown. It's a little bit orange. I will probably be using many other colors to layer it up a little bit. But you know what? Just get a layer of color down and then I think I'll take some of that orange brown blue color see and take some of that just the straight blue that's on there that's one of the nice things about having your colors sort of moved onto a palette is that you can pick up the color it's right here you see it you go, ooh, yeah, right here. Dab some of that color in. Start getting it to look like a watercolor. But you notice, very controlled. It's not whooshing all over the place. This is like coloring a coloring page now. Once you've got your black lines down for ink and wash, ink and wash, black lines, down. I like to draw my black lines first and then put my wash on. And you saw that those black lines are just a little framework. They're not super, super detailed and hard. You haven't missed it yet. We, we've done the, we, we're still painting. We're still painting. I'm going to take some of that darker brown or brighter brown since it's on my brush and just streak in those feathers down low on his wing. And I'm just picking up colors that are sort of mixed up here on my palette, dropping some more dark on here. Look at that reference. You see where the dark is. You see where the light is. You can do this. It is easy. It is. Especially when you're treating, when you tell yourself you're doodling, you're doodling with paint, you're coloring. It's just like when you were a kid and coloring in a color book. You don't have to be too fussed about this. Remember, this is just a piece of paper and it's a little bit of paint. I've had this paint palette for over a year, almost a year and a half. Look at that. You can tell I've used it, but there's still a ton of paint there. Have fun with it. I think I want to put a little bit more bright and the way to get this to look more bright is actually to put a little bit of darker color on. So I'm going to go with that sort of reddish orange, but I am going to pick up some yellow with it also. Ah, there, see, I've got both colors. I'm going to put that yellow, that yellow color, yellow mixed orange. There we go. See how when you start putting a darker color or a darker value of a color down, 
it makes that go brighter, doesn't it? And down here, as it falls away, it's actually going to be much more brown. I'm taking sort of a sienna brown color and just dropping it in. And I'm dabbing it. I'm just dropping it so it's sort of speckled. Let's see. I don't know if that angle will do it, but we will try. Let's see if we can go here. And if you can see if I'm just dabbing. You, you can see how my brush is not, I'm going to pick up a little bit darker brown, how I'm just barely touching. I'm not, I'm not squishing the brush. Here, let's see. I'm not squishing the brush like that. I'm just barely touching and leaving little dots of paint. So pick up some more. Make that a little bit darker. But I'm just putting little speckles of, of color down here and a few little speckles around the eye. See, just you can hardly tell that I'm doing it. And right over his beak. Yeah, it's doodling. It is doodling. And that is the cool, cool thing here. I like that angle but it's not as easy for you to see what I'm doing because it's so soft. Let's take a little bit of that darker brown and we're just going to lightly tap some of that brown right up here under the edge of the hat. And then I'm gonna go look for some of my mixed up blue orange brown and I'm gonna dab that right in there also. We want to make it feel like the hat is on his head, so you need to have some darker shadow right under the edge of the hat. That is looking so, so cute. I need a darker version of color down here, a little bit more, a little bit more concentrated, another layer, and it's a slightly different version of that blue brown that blue orange mixed together because this part here is going off under his wing it's a little bit darker see just breathe through it if you feel that you don't have your your drawing and or painting or doodling mojo actually just start doodling just grab a piece of paper and just start making lines on paper. And you might start seeing something show up in those lines. And when you do, let your imagination carry you along. Now I'm just picking up paint that's sitting on my tape. It's a little bit of that blue-brown. It's going off into the tail. A little bit of that up here around his eye. He has a bit of a shadow back here behind his eye. Shape of his head. I really like this. I think I'm just going to put some very light, just hardly even touching the paper. See how that makes it feel like there's feathers in his wings? I think I'm done with that part. I am going to grab some of that blue again and watch, I'm not even worried about getting color on my palette of colors. I'm making a really, really dark color. It's not quite a black. Mix orange and that dark sort of Prussian blue. And I'm just touching his little legs. Get those into more of a silhouette but I'm not being perfect with it. I'm leaving a little bit of highlight here and there. Look at that. You can do it. Okay, do the doodle. Guys, do the doodle. <laughs> yeah, I even wore my shirt today. Do the doodle. Oh, those of you who are, who are here, 
and have been here. Oh gosh, my hair looks terrible today. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go back off of the, uh, <laughs> off of me. Um, over on Teespring, I have a, uh, Black Friday or holiday Christmas set, a holiday sale, Black Friday sale, copy. And it is, doo -doo -doo -doo, paste. I've got a coupon for 15% off if you buy anything in my shop. But if you are um, buying more than $50 worth of stuff, make sure and check out uh, Teespring's over 50 um, free coupon. They've got it listed at the top of the their website because saving on shipping I think it's, if you're over $50, saving on shipping is probably more than you would save on 50%. I'm putting some of that dark color now in on the beak. And I'm not going all the way up to the top edge of it. I'm leaving a little highlight. The bottom of his beak is going to be the darkest. He's got his little nostril spot there. Leave a little sliver of white. Boom. Boom. All right. I want to go ahead and actually we're going to paint in that hat. There's a pretty kind of Christmassy Christmas hat red right here. I'm going to put it down on my palette or, okay, this is becoming my palette, isn't it? Put it down on my plastic board here, putting quite a bit of water into it because I want to not have it be totally in your face. I do have my uh, co uh, Coca, Coca, my Australian cutie pie with his Santa hat on several different things. And if you're interested in the little Robin on the holly, I could do him onto some pillows. I think he would be a really cute little pillow. See how I'm leaving some white? Now I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the red. It's still going to be watered down, but it's not going to be as watered down. And I'm going to drop some of that darker version of the color into the wet paint and let it sort of flow around a little bit. But it's controlled because we wet the paper down first. Yeah, using these boards as your um, surface to tape down your artwork, then you've got a place to mix your paints and you always have a place to mix your paints. That's, this makes it really nice when you go outside or you want to be someplace else without a whole ton of, uh, a ton of supplies because you've got all of your colors, you've got a place for your painting to be worked and you've got a place to work with your paint. And my Amazon shop, if you want to help support my channel, Amazon is a really great place to uh, start your shopping. And if you start off in my Amazon store, uh, I'll get, you can get these uh, Coroplast, it's Coroplast, C-O-R-O-P-L-A-S-T. And it is, you can buy it on uh, Amazon. I believe I have it in my Amazon shop. And... You can also get it at most big box craft stores because they are over in the signboard section. This is this was really made for signboards because it is a weatherproof, waterproof type material. And the reason why I was dabbing the paint off was so that you could see it looks just like corrugated plastic or corrugated cardboard. And yeah, order it from Amazon. Awesome. If you want to order from Amazon, let's see, do I have my Amazon link? I've got my Amazon book link. My Amazon link. Oh, there it is. If you want my Amazon shop, come on. Why is that? There it goes. Copy. My mouse is being weird. <laughs> I figure since you guys are here, 
and you're still here, you might want to start your shopping spree at Amazon through my link. It helps my, my channel. And if you're already going to be going there and shopping, you know, it helps. See, I'm not worried about if I go outside my lines. I'll just make my, my paint a little bit wider so it looks like it's just fluffy. Now, I do want a little bit of design or detail in the hat. So what I'm going to do, I'm just picking up some of that kind of gray blue. And I'm just down here around the bottom where it would be closer to his face, where it would be shadowed. I'm putting a little bit of that gray blue. See how that makes it feel? Boom. Makes it feel just like it is shaped. Don't have to do any more to that. I think I'll pick up a little bit of, the, bit of that color and drop some in on the bottom side of that circle for his little bobble. And now I want to go in and get those berries. We're going to do the berries about the same color as the hat. And look at that. I'm just dabbing the color in. We will take a slightly darker version in. Can I make a Canadian shop? Yes, I can make a Canadian shop. I hadn't. I need to. Thank you for the for that. That will be my my uh, task for today. I will make a Canadian shop. <laughs> and now I'm just picking up. Look at that. I'm taking some of that red right into that blue that's on my on that piece of tape. And I'm going to drop some of that right around the bottom or where it would be in shadow, where it's sort of tucked down. But it's just like coloring. It's just like coloring in your coloring book. You're just making color. That's all you're doing. When you doodle a little drawing to paint it in, you're just making yourself a coloring page. <laughs> Thank you, Linda, for your for making an order. That that really is helpful. And I'm just picking up some more of that color, dropping it in to the shadows. That's all we're doing for that. Now I do want to get some color and highlight on my green of those holly. So I think what we're going to do is actually take sort of a surprising color. We're going to go with this much brighter, almost acidy green. It's kind of my highlight color that I want to put in. So other ways to support my channel, if you are interested, is I do have a Patreon over on patreon.com and you can sign up for whatever amount you want to do. There's a couple things that the, the highest level gets. Well, actually only one extra thing that the highest level gets. And that is you get mentioned at the end of my videos as a, um, as a Patreon supporter, super supporter. See, I put that, now that color looks very yellow and I wanted it that way. Now I'm going to go and grab more of a natural looking green. It's a little bit grayed out. Oh, wonderful. So you did have some supplies after all that weren't just your son's little paint box. That is spectacular. Always use what you have before going and buying more. But anyway, yes, the Patreon is a really fun way to help support my channel and my studio. Patreon is a smaller community and I do have special, special little 
uh, rewards for my patrons. And if you sign up as a Patreon right on Patreon right now, I have a special. I'm sending every one of my patrons who's paid as of the first of December a hand painted card. You get a hand painted card for the holidays. And that's anybody in the world. Anybody that uh, Patreon will allow, I will send you a card. So all patrons will be getting their, their cards in December. So I'm just picking up darker color, darker version of that color, just more pigmented to start putting in and making more shadow. See how I'm putting more shadow on the one behind right there and right here. And shadow down here at the base, but I'm trying to keep it less, less dark on the ones that are on the top. So fun. All right. And now I'm actually going to go to a slightly different version of color. There's a lot of greens on here that are really nice and more muted. I like that. So right there, down here at the tip where it's sort of falling away, maybe up there at the very tippy tip and down at the base. I do want to dry this because I think I'm going to put a background in. I want to dry it and I want to take a photograph of it so that we have a photograph without a background so I can drop it on to so I can drop it onto um, my in my Teespring and make some products really quick. I will make a mug with this. I will make a pillow with it. Does anybody want a shirt with the robin on it like this? Nice big robin in the middle of the shirt. And Becky, I'm so sorry for your loss. I hope that you and your family find peace and find some joy in the memories because really that's, you know, your people are never gone completely if you can remember them. But thank you so much for coming and spending some of your time with us. I hope that this is helping you also. Finding, finding time to take care of yourself in a time when your heart is, is hurting is actually a really good thing. It is not selfish. It is one of the best things that you can do is to take care of yourself. Oh, that's pretty. So I'm going to dry it and, oh no, I ran my... Well, fiddlesticks. Ah! My brush, is, my brush is colored. Well, you know what? It's like, I guess we're going to go and put the background in and I'll just have to cut the background out. Background is going to be uh, wintry blue. So it's actually going to be that, that blue color. Just going to wet that down and wipe it off. See? Don't worry about it if you do silly things like I do. <laughs> I ran it right through the paint. So let's dry it and then we will we will make the background. You want to dry, sorry, you want to dry so that your elements that you've painted don't absorb the paint that you're putting into the background. And so by seeing that red that got put up there, there's probably going to be uh, red and green and blue. Oh yeah. Always take care of yourself guys and take care of your household income first. Your art, um, and your art experience 
supporting uh, uh, supporting other artists doesn't have to cost you money. I love that I have support coming from many different places here. Support in just watching the videos. Watching the videos all the way through, guys, really is a huge, huge support. YouTube will recommend my videos to other people. This is just that uh, kind of Prussian blue color. I'm putting it in the background first and I just sneak, I just went under my tape. So it's not going to have a perfect line. No big deal. I'm putting it down in heavy spots and in less heavy spots. I'm using water to move it around. There is going to be some green put in here over the top. We're going to have some holly berries and maybe a holly bush or something going in that will help to obscure some of my little boo-boo um, paint that got plopped around or scraped around by the uh, There we go. I'm just, see, I'm just dabbing it on. This is going to end up being like paint, or like paint, like sky coming through. And I can, I could definitely go up to a bigger brush. And I think I will after I do some of this area down here. See how I just dropped that really dark color down there? It's going to be this branch is up in the tree. But there's going to be some more green abstractly dropped in. But I'm not making it perfectly covered with paint. Yeah, nothing is perfect. Absolutely. The only thing that is perfect is it is perfect to spend time taking care of yourself. That is actually, in my mind, that is the perfect way to spend some time is to take care of yourself because it does make it so you can't, I mean, that's my, that's my theme here, guys. Um, that's my motto, my mission. Well, my motto is to take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I mean it. I certainly mean it. Okay, I guess I didn't need to go to a bigger brush. All right, so now I'm going to just let that flow around a little bit. I sort of like these areas where it doesn't, it's not perfect. It's so. Something that I've noticed is that if I press too hard with my paintbrush, the edge of the plastic gets on here and kind of scratches. And that's actually okay in this instance because I'm going to be drying this layer and then putting some green on. And so it'll just look like some branches. but I want to get a little bit of green and some red in here and then pull the tape off. <laughs> but yeah, take care of yourself. And if you could help take care of me by sharing these videos, watching them all the way to the end, put on a playlist. I've got a whole playlist of the holiday paintings. Sorry about making the, the, this really loud. I'm not, I, I'm trying to not run this very often. It's just a heat tool. Um, and I try not to stop my paint from moving, but you know, sometimes you have to move on and I'm sorry, I should have said, I'm going to turn that on so it wouldn't blast your ear balls, your, your ear balls. Oh my good goodness. Blast your hearing in your headphones. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that sort of muted green. 
And we're just going to drop it in sort of just like that. I'm not, it's kind of trees, it's kind of holly plants, it's kind of whatever. It's just texture in the background, so don't don't worry about making anything particularly particularly thought out. I kind of want that green balancing it since we have this green over here, but the green on this side is going to be much more abstract and just sort of plopped in. And let's see, how do I, how do I work that in? I guess I'll bring some green up in this space this way so I can bring it across and then I can put some little holly berries. And that is what we do. You just sort of think about it and go, well, what would happen if I do that? See, now it feels like he's tucked into a little uh, bush. Let's zoom back out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing more easily. See how it's starting to feel like he's tucked back into a little bush now? How do you find the, um, the list? The, there is an I card right up here in the top corner. If you click on that, it should open up and say Holiday Designs. I've probably got 15 or 17 holiday designs on there now. And they're, those are all pretty much, I mean, some of them are uh, the, the speed videos, I think, but pretty much they are real time lessons. So you can just turn the list on and set autoplay on your YouTube. And it will just play through the pick, play through all the videos. Some of them, well, I, oh, if they are little videos that are like 20 minutes, they are ones that I have uh, edited. And some of them do have Christmas music or soft music on them. So I'm just putting some dark in here to kind of balance that out a little bit. Just back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Just, I'm going to just put some going across that. We're going to, I want a little bit of that darker green going up. See how the green takes over that blue. So you don't have to worry that you put that blue down first. But if you have any spots that it comes through, it's blue. So it It's filled, it, your painting is filled with color. There we go. Just work that right up around that edge underneath. I'm so happy that you guys were able to come along and catch this also. Now you get to a point where you do need to like dry. So it is, I am going to turn the dryer on again. I am going to do dry this side over here. So I want to put a few details. I want to put a few clumps of red berries. Now, if you let this dry naturally with it taped down, it will stay taped down and it will be flat. This right now is not flat. What I'm going to have to do is wet the back side of the paper and tape it down and let it dry. Hello, Pat. Patricia, nice to see you. All right, so there. I'm going to just go in and grab some of this. Oh, looks like I've got a little bit of green in my brush still. That's okay. 
it just makes my my red a little bit more dark and I'm just going to dab just tap in a few little clumps of berries here and there you could splatter if you wanted to I'm not going to splatter but see how I ended up camouflaging that I had had that oops as I'm coming down here I'm making my berries maybe a little bit bigger but these are just little little clumps of berries and they look very dark and that's okay they're just to be an impression they're not they're not anything to be um, let's see what do I want to say they're not perfection they're not up close I'm taking a little bit of that more magenta red that brighter red and it will get it will get darker on on the darker green it won't stand out as well but it is a different shade and so it does show up a little bit differently than that first red now I'm not squeezing the brush when I'm doing these I am just touching and letting the color come through the branch right here needs to be a little bit darker see now you're down to the down to the details down to the if you see it and you want to fix something adjust your contrast see because that's what's gone on down here is that I've lost contrast just making it slightly darker take a little bit of these different browns so I have a whole bunch of different browns here so I'm just grabbing oh yeah there for the underside of that branch just a bit of brown this is kind of a sepia brown right there and I think I want that little that that brown I'm gonna bring some here and I'm going to just touch and bring a little bit of that sepia brown into the wing now that it's dry you can go in with your final details and just gently lay in some indications of feathers I'm not painting all the feathers see I'm giving some slightly darker streaks here for those feathers I'm going to darken up the back of that tail and underneath of the back of that tail there oh there we go see bump up your contrast very impressionistic very watercolor but you notice we didn't have to smoosh water all over the place to make this I am pretty darn happy I'm pretty happy I think maybe maybe we need just a touch more of that kind of orangey brown I don't want it to be green so maybe right there all right and we're gonna put a little bit darker right down here in his belly yes very impressionistic uh, watercolor is or can be very impressionistic You just have to remember with watercolor that you're saving the white you notice we didn't put any white on here except for the white of the paper I think I'm gonna dry it real fast again we're gonna take him off the off this backing board see if I can get the paper to flatten out a little bit
There we go. We're going to pull the tape off. And, yep, because my tape um, peeled up, I've got an edge here that is much more... Uh, much more fluid, almost like it was, oh, look at him. I'm sorry. I just, I just went a little, uh, oh, let's zoom in just a bit more and focus. Yes, pretty and fast. There we go. So if you guys liked this little guy, make sure that you click that like button and you subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos with simple, fast, fun, easy drawings that you can do. You are going to be successful. I have many students who are very successful with their art because they learned how to doodle and take the pressure off themselves. And that's what I did here. I doodled this little guy took the pressure off myself to just have fun and spend some time with you. That's another cool thing is these live chats. We get to visit with each other. We have a great community in the live chat and it's a very friendly place. It's a safe place to be. So thank you guys. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon.